Blowing across Nigeria is the wind of hope as Africa's young entrepreneurs with the same dream take a break from their everyday lives and embark on a journey across the nation with their ideas, innovations, and inventions. From the east, west, north, and south of Nigeria, we will witness as they make their way through the screening and auditioning to meet and convince the AYE judges why they should be among the chosen beneficiaries. You can't come and speak to a panel of investors and say there's a whole lot of choices. You need to be as strong as you are technically with what you want. No, 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 I'm coming. This is new idea and new business. But it, you don't really have a very strong structure of how you see your vision practically moving forward. You know, you know it feels very loose to me. I think you should have sat with them before you come here. If you invest in that business today, you're not coming into to make mistakes. We will experience their passion. So I want to feed African as a nation. Their pain. Get out of here. And their gain. Hey, why you give you a lot of customers. You cater for them, I will give you money up front. You'll be able to buy all your equipment. Welcome to season four of Africa's Young Entrepreneurs Reality TV show. Over the next 12 weeks, we will meet many entrepreneurs who have come to pitch their business or idea to the judges. My name is Joy Mind. Okay, I'm an enthusiast, so I'm hopeful that I'll be granted my request. It will enhance my planning, and my business is going to kick off fully. I've tried it at different stages, but I need a grant to enable the business to kick off into full operation. First up, we have Chef Gizi, who aims to bring an exquisite dining experience to your home. My name is George Oluwali, and the name of my business idea is Jesus Fine Dining Services. It's an initiative food concept where we bombard the homes of our clients and we convert it into an exact fine dining atmosphere. We come in with our equipment, we come in with our wares, our tools and equipment, and we bring in an entire fine dining restaurant into the homes of our clients. We intend to run three packages, which is the classic package, the gold package, and the premium, ultimate platinum package. Our target audience are the high-class citizens, the middle-income earners. We cater specifically for wedding anniversaries, birthdays, special in-house events, corporate events, and we help to take to solve the problem of privacy. We've noticed that rich clients love comfort, prestige, and the love to derive maximum utility from their service. It is to this end that we seek to cater for this service and bringing the concept of a fine dining restaurant into their private houses. This is a niche market worldwide and is largely underdeveloped in Africa. The personal chef sector offers a window of opportunity for any entrepreneur with the charisma and skill set to execute a culinary experience for the rich and famous. According to the American Personal Chef Association, APCA, there are approximately 6,000 personal chefs in the USA. The number of clients served is estimated at 72,000, generating 52 million US dollars per year. Within the next five years, at the present rate of growth, there will be nearly 20,000 personal chefs in the US alone, serving nearly 300,000 clients and contributing 1 billion US dollars. Well, I've always carried a strange passion for cooking. I actually loved food from when I was a child. So when I finished from the university, I did a soul searching and then I made the decision that for life I want to be in the food industry. So I started up a fries outlet. That was when my business started. That was in 2015, 10th December precisely, in the University of Abuja premises. So I faced a lot of challenge as, an, as a new entrepreneur and I didn't make so much money, but I, I gained so much. I learned a lot of experience. My personality, I'm, I'm not a bold and confident person. But I, I had to realize that the entrepreneurship world is not for a timid person. 
So it toughened my skin, it pushed me out, I wasn't scared to feel. I kept on trying new things. And then I noticed that for myself, I don't just love cooking, I love cooking and then serving, seeing people enjoy my service, getting feedback. And that was what brought about this idea, the exigency and the need for people to, to have maximum pleasure. It's more like an experience. This idea is better experienced than explained. You just give us your home and we give you a restaurant. What about your team? You're my, just as good as your team. Okay, my team. I'm, 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 I'm playing, as, playing the role of a lead chef and this is not a daily adventure. So depending on the location, cause we plan to cater for any in-house events anywhere in Nigeria. So depending on the location, I have contact with other chef friends in most locations. So I'll be able to raise a team. I have my permanent team, but I'll be able to raise a team depending on the location, cause it's not going to be financial friendly to be moving a team to each location we wanna do this. So I raised a team and I believe that even a novice can be trained in food, except the person is not interested. So I just need you to tell me I'm interested, I can cook, I can do this, and then just leave the rest to me. I will make sure I transfer that knowledge. So I just need one assistant or two assistants and then someone to take the photographic coverage. I have skills in editing and food photography as well. So if I get someone to do the coverage while I'm working, I do the editing and everything at the end, which will aid our social media marketing. You cook Nigerian food? And, and what other foods do you cook? Well, uh, I was trained as a continental chef. So I prepare Nigerian meals, I prepare oriental dishes, I prepare Italian dishes, basic continental dishes. Definitely I can't prepare, there's no one that can prepare all the dishes. But I could prepare continental, major continental dishes, as well as Nigeria. Then I also specialize on fusion. I get to know, I, I, I have a questionnaire that I intend to give to clients. So I know who is the kind of person you are hosting or what, what was the background like? If person coming from Mexico, can I give a fusion with Nigerian and Mexican dishes? Can I do a fusion with Nigerian and Italian? I need to know the background of the person, know the age category, know the person's allergies. Because most people, especially rich people, they have issues of allergies when they eat out. So we have a questionnaire. Say, Are you allergic to garlic? Do you like it chili? Do you like it hot and spicy? Since it's a private event, we just want to keep that for them. Yeah, I, I'm actually excited by your idea because I used to do this myself as wow. a fundraiser, wow. right? So I would bring in real high, high level people and give them an experience and just exactly. recalling what that was like. So I am more than happy to share all of my ideas with you because I, I totally know that you can take people to a euphoric experience exactly. through exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So what do you, what, what, what do you need from me, right? Well, I, I applied for mentorship. I need, sorry, I need um, equipment, business equipment and utensils. But I don't need one equipment. This way, what I refer to as equipment and utensils. Different issues, as I said, we want to um, split the service into three kedas. So I will need, um, I won't be able to be using one plate for every occasion. So I will need these things in not too large, but reasonable quantity. Have you done the cost invoice? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. What's, what's the figure? Everything, the cost of everything is about 1.5 million. Okay. Now, profit and loss. Tell us about it. Um, I'll begin with the profit. Number one, we don't do um, cooking and then look for customers or pray for customers to sell. We sell our idea, then they call us. So now we are averting waste. We are averting loss. There is no issue of we prepared the meal, we didn't preserve it well, then it got spoiled. We are not paying any, in fact, we are even cooking in the client's house. So we, if we don't have access to the client's house, we are not even going to start cooking. So waste is averted, loss is averted to the barest minimum. This was what I experienced very well when I was new into business. I, I lost so much. So not being able to preserve food and all that. Then the profits, this is premium excellence, premium quality and we are not marketing it to just anybody. So this is for the rich, the love class, the love excellence, and I believe they are willing to pay. I think Please. your idea is fantastic, and I, I concur with my fellow colleagues. How do you market yourself to the public out there to say, I'm here, I've arrived, I have a wonderful product? Because it sounds to me that you're in loss mode right now. I mean, not, you don't have enough clients. Yeah, I don't have enough clients because I don't have enough equipment, utensils, to push. I'm avoiding taking something that is not excellent and putting it on the social media. So I post my food, 
which gets a lot of followership and comments, then let them know we handle private and fine dining catering services. But I'm unable to present this idea to the world, apart from people who are close to me for the now. How do you replicate to... yourself? Sir? Because now, even if you get more equipment, yes. then five people or six homes request yes. for the service. What yes. happens? If it's going to be tonight, I've weighed my options. I will call my chef friends, my expert chef friends that I know, I've tested, I've trusted, I've built a relationship with. They know what I do. I sell this idea to them. Let them know that I'll take the risk of allowing them to represent me. But with our mobile devices, I'll be able to control everything. We have the WhatsApp videos. We have, let me see the picture of this now. Let me see the stage George, of this now, sir. That for me is a big risk to your reputation if you're going to trust and if they haven't seen you in action. Absolutely. You know, that's the first thing that I picked. That's the highest risk in your business. You're going to suffer problems with accountability, right? Andrew. If people are not part of the business and they've not bought into the business, tomorrow they can go and misrepresent your brand. The good the thing is, you, a lot of entrepreneurs come here and they ask for the present. And the best thing is you even get the future even when you come here because part of what we're talking to you about is the future. But I'm still trying to deal with that present, which is your present need. Okay. Which in this case, Chef Jeezy can only attend to one dinner at a time. But Chef Jeezy needs equipment that caters for three different classes for that particular client. Am I right or wrong? You're right, sir. Low, middle, or high class. But Not what we can support him with is at least for that one to then get all those equipment for any class, any level. Am I right? Yeah. So when the time comes to expand, I'm sure that you'll be able to expand by yourself because you will have been empowered to that stage. I think let's talk about this a little bit. Mm. Okay, so give us a moment. All right, thank you. Gizzi is not sure if he's winning. The body language is apprehensive. And I think you just charge top dollar and you have top class clients and just start as who he is, build his reputation as the most like awesome guy who's going to turn up and mm. blow your mind for mm. the night. And, and you know? he's got that personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even if it's only one Chef Jeezy that exists in Nigeria, I don't mind. As long as for one day in my life, I get to invite Chef Jeezy to my house. That's and if right. that's going to be 200,000 there. Imagine how many other people would want, right? Yeah. I have yeah. Chef friends and they charge mm -hmm. of us, it's amount million to months. be able to yeah, cook. Well, that's my next point. Just with this pricing, you said 10, 20, 20 No, he's going to charge way more. It's going to be or like the charge. 10, 20, 50. Not yeah. only that, Stephen, mm -hmm. on the costing, this is what I think he should do. If it, there's a difference if he's cooking for 10 people or two people. And that's the concern. What he needs to do is, if, if it's two people, there's an, an average charge, mm. which is higher than it would normally be if it's 20 people or 30 people. This way his income even, is yeah. secured. Yeah. Right? And just one, one last point around supporting him from, from my perspective is he was speaking about he's not able to present this beautiful food out on social media and he has to buy equipment. I think maybe doing it the other way, let him cook a whole lot of food and let's just send a photographer to him and take mm. a whole lot of fantastic photographs for him to do his social media. Yeah. Yeah. So probably showcase, should we see? Get and, started, yeah. and I've got, I've got to ask him something though. Welcome back, George. So the judges um, have a few concerns and a little bit of advice as well for your business. First of all, we think it's brilliant, right? But just like any other startup, there's certain things that you might not be able to see that we're here to help you with. And we'll discuss this as we move along. Now, on the issue of costing, what we feel is that you need to cost it in such a way that it is profitable to you and the people that work for you and the business in general. And what I mean is that if you're going to cook for two people and 10 people, there's a differential. I would advise you to cost in such a way that if you're only cooking for two people or four people, there's, there's a surcharge. And if you're cooking for 30 people, 
it's a little bit discomfort. I don't know how savvy you are with marketing yourself. It's really hard for artistic people to market themselves, you know, potentially, maybe you're awesome at it and that's cool. But I, but I do think when you have something special like this, that could be something that could really work out. Yes. You know, I don't know what other people think about that, but I, that, that is a feeling I have, as someone who can just devote themselves to pushing the marketing side of it, preferably someone who's highly connected. And someone to help you with your costing, because you need to earn a certain amount, yes. whether it's two people or ten people. Yes. Correct. And you need to come up with a figure that's going to make you comfortable. What's, what's, what's different? Besides the cooking, I'm sure you know this chef, right? What's it called? What's the name of that chef? You don't know the chef that sprinkles the salt like this? The steak. Salt Bay. Salt Bay. You don't know Salt Bay? Right. Oh my God. How can you not know Salt Bay? It's a Go to the internet, well, Salt Bay. Too busy cooking. That's the kind of guy you should be like. He cooks for only celebrities. And he's so good with his knife. And this is how he sprinkles his salt. <laughs> go and go, go Salt Bay. So what is different? What is after cooking? in yeah. my house, well, what do I expect? The presentation and plating first. You could come and eat, I know you're an AYE person, I know you're black and gold, that's why this is <laughs> black and gold. Oh. And then this could wow you first, you just seen AYE on your table. And then in your plate, you could have AYE with the sauces. So the plating and presentation is first. That's an experience. Then the story, the story, the background, the history behind the meal. And as I said, if you're paying for premium, there will be music. I would have done my homework on the kind of musics you like. There could just be a snap of finger and then you hear a favorite song playing. Amazing. Don't forget you're a public person. You're public, your, your profile is in the public. I can get certain information, either through my database, my questionnaire, or my own personal research. Okay, um, Mr. Will came up with a very brilliant suggestion that, um, which I still think is one of the most important thing in your case, is to get showcased. Yes. To the right audience. And um, I think we can work around something like that where we can, where we can showcase you. Myself, I, I, um, I don't think it should be for everybody. I'm yes. sorry. Yes. I think it should be Chef Jeezy. And only one should exist. I'm sorry. Maybe there's another one, maybe your son. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Jeezy Jr. <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, that's how it is. And um, so, um, Ibarra, what do you think? Well, Tiamra also volunteered to give you a little bit of expertise, and, and I think that's very noble of her. I just hope that you'll be able to take in all the knowledge that she's able to bring you away. Um, what, what we're going to do is, besides the mentoring that she's going to provide for you, uh, we are going to start using your services, pay for it as the judges, and help you the marketing, because you do need the marketing, which is very important. From your uh, business proposal, I did see that you have some savings. I would advise that you open up a website because people would want to see the images and then do a lot of social media boost paid ads. It's very affordable. Instagram, Facebook. Can be, and we can also help can you with that. Can pay for your website. Absolutely. But we will try that, um, Mr. Reed's idea, whereby you we give you a place where you can set up proper photographs, yeah. you know, create a fine dining, put up the website, get strong counseling from someone who has done that, you know, and then we take it from there. Yeah. Thank Brilliant. you for the black and gold, and have a nice day. Wow, well, it was wonderful. It wasn't different from what I expected and envisioned. Well, they offered to assist me, um, far beyond the capacity I wanted them to assist. I started when I, uh, I started having this passion since I was in secondary school. Amina Alabi is a fashion designer for House of Sakia. She is extremely nervous and somewhat overwhelmed as she sits before the judges. This is not quite what she expected. How much business are you doing at the moment? For instance, how many uh, outfits do you sell each week? I sell 40. 40 a month? Yes. Hmm. How many staff do you have? I only have two. Okay, and you're working from home? Yes. Because I'm, a, I'm also a mother of two. Despite being nervous and heavily pregnant, Amina starts to get into the swing of things. What's your annual profit? Like last year? Last year, around oh, 300,000. How much free time do you have in a day? 24 hours? 
forget the evenings during the day how much free time do you have i yourself? have like uh, seven hours See, this is my oh, concern and i'm going to be very frank with you i asked you what has been the challenges to your business and you say the challenges have been that i am a mom and i'm extremely busy that's one of the challenges you mentioned the second one you say that some of the clients are not coming to you you have a problem with marketing so that's a huge concern for us because if I give you the three million, your life still doesn't change and your motherhood doesn't change. The judge's questions, along with truthful and encouraging advice, results in Amina once again becoming emotional and she begins to cry. You're a brave woman eh? for you to be doing what you're doing. Not everyone can do that. Thank you. Yeah. And I can assure you that that's all it takes in entrepreneurship sometimes, to be able to take the risk. Yes. You've started doing it in your back door, but now you've, you've gone to the boldness of even showing the world what you can do. But you must be also ready, because the moment you show your product to the world, you get the good, the bad, and the ugly. In this case, I won't call this the ugly, and neither will I call it the bad. I think it's a good start. Father E. Michael is an environmentalist and nature lover. I'm here to talk about the secondary school conservation outreach. It is um, a non-governmental organization which is ready to preach and make awareness about environmental conservation to the young ones, especially the secondary school people. While the judges are sympathetic to the environmental cause, they are unsure if the speech is about his business or the NGO. Um, it's, it's an NGO project. It is not a business, but it is a service to the community. It's a community service. What is clear is that he wants to spread environmental awareness. If we give you a platform now to talk to them at home, can you do that in a minute? Of course, sir. Would that be enough? And at least, sir, you came for something because entrepreneurship is taking advantage. So we help you take the advantage of the fact that millions of viewers are watching. What message do you have to tell the world out there? What I just want us to know is that it is no longer a news that global warming is a threat to the planet Earth. And the only way we can ensure to save our planet Earth is by planting a tree. Let every one of us, if individual of us can plant a tree today, at least it will ameliorate the effect of carbon emission in our environment and it will save it. Like, because it is, science has proved it. Um, according to the Ministry of Agriculture, United States of America, that one acre of land can, um, can um, take up six tons of carbon dioxide and release back four tons of carbon and uh, four tons of oxygen, which is enough for 18 people to survive in a year. So I will um, use this medium to preach out to millions of people watching this right now that let's endeavor to be environmental cautious by planting a tree, just a tree, it can save a life. Noble course. Yeah, noble course. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. I have a question for you. What happens when life emergencies happen? What happens to you when you are in need of urgent funds? Well, God, I'm not a big no. no, no, I want my money I'll now. Come this what will happen I want if you suddenly need a doctor or a lawyer's advice in a critical moment? Hey, what we like to now? What we like to? <laughs> the big question is this Who will trust you enough to come to your aid? AYE Trust Fund. Join the trusted community today. Entrepreneurship is a journey of exploration. Looking at the vast expanse of Africa's most populous nation, it is clear that the real breakthrough for entrepreneurs lie in the ability to break beyond boundaries and explore the unexplored. This year, AYE breaches the limits of congestion in closed cities and opens up the opportunities that abound in the beautiful city of... Join us!
Just this December, as thousands of entrepreneurs gather for the largest entrepreneurship convention in Africa. See you there. Chiamachinere of Market Now Now, an online shopping portal. Wow, she's so excited. I guess she has so much to say. You know, the thing is having a business idea and not knowing where to start from. But somehow I started and structured a business plan. And you know, for when I was particularly called for iron, I'm like, oh my gosh, that means I've done something very good. But you know, coming to pitch before an international judge, you would have to be prepared. You would have to know your onions. Getting in there, I was like, oh my gosh, I've not seen the spaces before. But I had to compose myself. And I did. I started. The questions started rolling in. And somehow, yeah, there were some little things that I had to really check just so that the business is uh, well, well, you know, <laughs> what's it called now? You know, sorry, just so the business starts running. And the judges were able to connect with my business, see where I'm coming from, and said one or two things that actually make me leap. So I am super excited that this idea came through. How oh, it's not gonna stop me because it's something I eat and drink and I sleep about it every day. Meet Nonso Okafo, who has come up with an IT solution to address the problems of the Nigerian automotive industry. For the past uh, 11 years, I, I have observed closely in the automotive uh, uh, industry uh, what we are lacking you know, in the country here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, most of our technicians, uh, they lack adequate training and proper tools to work with. And then uh, I also observed that most vehicles that come from from America and they come from Europe and Asia, once they get to the port of entry, it kind of goes dark. There's no record to properly, you know, follow the history of this vehicle, the repairs and everything. So uh, what uh, I want to do is that we set up a platform, actually, that what we want to do is we want a situation whereby we're going to develop an app that's going to have two user interface, one for, one for car owners and one, one for the technicians. The Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, NBS, has estimated the total number of vehicles in the country at about 11.7 million. The demand for auto services has grown very rapidly due to the rise in the volume of vehicles that have found their way to the African road. A huge proportion of vehicles on the continent are often used or second-hand cars, which are more likely to break down and need regular repairs and servicing, unlike the relatively new ones. The demand for reliable mechanic is big business. Uh, actually, what it's going to do is uh, when uh, someone, for example, within the locality wants to make use of a technician, uh, what the app will do is that it will look for around for, for, use, uh, for technicians that are registered within the platform and it's going to bring them up. And then there's going to be a rating system for everybody that ha actually use their particular technician. When I mean technician, I'm talking about everybody that is into automobile repairs, from the mechanics all the way down to people that actually wash the cars. Every, every service that has to do with the automobile sector. There's going to be a rating, a, a, a list that, you know, that comes up from, you know, from the technicians that work within that locality. Then the, the rating is going to be based on the customers that actually use the technician before, the experience level, uh, how satisfied they are with you know, with the service of that person. So it kind of gives you an insight about the type of technician and whether he's able to, whether you can be able to work with him or not. Then when you actually choose the technician, the pictures, their qualification level, everything is going to come up. So such a way that the moment you have an issue, you, from the app you can actually fill out uh, the problem, the particular problem that you feel that your car has. Once you fill out those issues, then it comes up that uh, it's get, it gets logged into the system. Once it gets logged into the system, then there's a reference in such a way that if somebody later run in the future that wants to actually buy that car, kind of enters the VIN number of that car, which is the vehicle identification number of the vehicle. 
uh, it comes up the, the history of the car when it was repaired, the particular technician that repaired it, the time he did it, and what he actually fixed in the car. You know, so in case what the, also the, the database is going to be very useful for somebody in case that if your car is stolen, for example, you can actually flag it stolen. You know, so that in case if the person that takes that car goes to somewhere else to fix it and then now put down that VIN number, it comes up that the car is actually, you know, stolen and, you know, it's highlighted there. The, 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 the importance of it is that most technicians today in the country, they, they are not conversant with the recent uh, automobile technology, you know, in, uh, in, the, in the world today. Most of them, they learned the, the job with the old type of engine, not the injector system type of engine. So it keeps changing, the, the technology keeps changing, and most of them don't know about this. So what the platform is actually going to do is we're going to provide a support system for them, and also we're going to provide a regulated uh, spare parts, because the problem we also have in this country is that we don't have uh, quality spare parts for, you know, for these technicians. Most of the spare parts that they have are inferior. So you, you imagine somebody who is driving along the way, you know, in, in the middle of the highway, and then all of a sudden maybe a particular uh, something from the suspension system pulls out, you know? So it's quite life-threatening. So we wouldn't want to have that. So actually having a, a quality part that is well-regulated with this, uh, with the system that I have in place, we can actually be able to control and monitor the distribution of these uh, parts down to the grassroots, to the mechanics on the road, and also provide them with, uh, you know, with up-to-date training and support. Yeah, with the mechanics on the road, we're careful. Yes. Looking at about hundred and twenty thousand dollars in your third year, that means you're going to have a lot of mechanics on your database, right? Yes. Now, looking at we all know mechanics, how do you get your technicians to use the app? Well, you know, these days most people, you know, a lot of people use smartphones these days, and they kind of they've learned so these things. User friendly. Right? Yes, it's very very user friendly. And they built it. Yeah, actually, I have already built a platform, which is a website. Okay. Is uh, www.spotdem.com. Uh, so, is it functioning? Do you hear? Yes, it's functioning. It's up and running. If you if you open it, you, you'll see it right now with this car. Yeah, you know, actually, like we got the idea. So, I think it sounds really great. I want to know what's happening at the moment and where you want to take it. I get your vision, okay. um, and like, how is the functionality going? All of that. Okay, uh, presently now, uh, we've been, we, we partner with uh, auto, quite a number of auto centers within the country and also local mechanics. Mm -hmm. I've spoken with quite a lot of them. I've been doing that for the past 11 years now. Mm -hmm. And um, the, also the, the spare parts distributors, because this is a market I have closely monitored for the past 11 years in the country, locally on the streets. Mm -hmm. And I've observed these people and how they operate. So that is what brought about the idea, you know. And I developed the website for that which is up and running right now it's been up and running for since 2013. so website. people are spotting yeah a people are actually going there because hiring them and... yes yes ma'am because apart from you know apart from the repairs we also have certified cars that we also exhibit there like vehicles that are certified by us that people have used that have a proper track history but how do you bring in the customer on the far end because that is where the challenge is going to be. So I want to understand your marketing strategy to the end buyer and the end user, not the people supplying the service. Those are easy because they'll tell you, oh, I'll just come on board. I might just spot a client from your end, you understand? But now the end user. Yeah, um, the, the end user actually, they are the primary you know, aim here because uh, they are the ones that use the vehicles. You How do you understand? market to them? Yes, of course, I can. Because the, what the app does is, like I said earlier, you know, the, the app has to use the interface. The app has and, to be downloaded, correct? Yes, it has to be downloaded. How on do I find out app. about the app? And yeah, it's the creation, the, the awareness, of course. Uh, we, I want to understand your marketing. Plan yes, for that. yes, of course. Wish I have been doing that. How much money are you looking for? How much money do you get paid when your business happens? Okay, apart from the app, I need to also explain some other thing because you know the, the, the I didn't ask you to explain some other things. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm. Are you I'm, looking for money here? Eh? Yes. Or you yes, want me to download your app? No, no, I, I am looking for funding. Of how much? Well, well, I'm looking at thirty-five million naira. Thirty-five million naira. Yeah, because we need to have because this is an app. It's going to be a nationwide thing. I, I broke down the regions in Nigeria Sometimes into three, into three, three different... Three, in the, where you know that you're asking for a higher amount, you think you want to justify the reason why you need that money. But let me tell you one good thing about an investor. Even before you start talking about that, they know what a good idea is. And you don't need to sell it so much. 
for the right investment. So don't worry, don't go to that one. So let's go back to how much do you charge? How do you make money per day? Let's look okay, at this. Yeah, the, the, well, how the app, how it's going to work is that there are going to be two charges, one for the spare parts, for the replacement parts, and then one for the labor charges. You understand? In the labor charges, actually, everything is going to be done on the platform, on the app. Mm -hmm. Once a payment is made, because the payment is going to be made on the platform, 30% goes to the platform, 70% goes to the for labor charges. But the spare parts is going to be regulated in the sense that we, 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 we have conversed with manufacturers directly. We're going to make the, the spare parts as affordable as possible. Let's finish the money. You transfer the money to the to the mechanic. Yes. We pay the, to the app. Say this guy repairs my car, twenty-five thousand naira. Yes. How it's going to work is that. Car, how yeah? it's going to work is that. For example, I'm a car user. My car has broke down in a kedja. Yeah. Somewhere along the road, I bring out the app. I already have. I'm already a registered user of yeah. that app. Yeah. Now I open it up. It's going to look for all the registered technicians within this environment. Okay. Then it's going to bring it out for you mm -hmm. in a list form. You understand? But that doesn't mean you cannot expand your search if you want oh, to get the God. Let me just, I, I, So yeah. now I pay. Who do I pay? Uh, is it a subscription? How do I there's, pay? There's now no the guy has fixed my no, car. I, I was getting there. I was I've getting got, there. I've passed there. The guy has fixed my car. I want to pay him. You okay. don't want me to pay? Yes, of course the person is going to pay. So how do I pay? But when, when the person pays on the app, yeah. Then once the person pays on the app, of course the technician already has his own profile, his own you know his own dashboard where he has uh, you know uh, payments that has been made that will be credited to his to account there on that profile. How much percentage you of that money? Now I'm looking at thirty percent goes to the platform. Thirty, thirty percent, then seventy percent. That's for labor charges. It's, it's just uh, still know. the Uber of Auto World, 30% and 70% to the other people. Um, Give me a breakdown of a 35 million. What are you okay. going to do with uh, it? One, we want to break, we want to have a training, uh, we want to have something like a sub headquarters. Like now, for example, in Lagos now, Lagos is going to be the office that will take care of the western part of the region. Abuja will take care of the northern part of the region. Then That's fine. Part, Give part, us part, a breakdown then, of the then, then we have to have an office and training centers there too. So we're going to have a, a technician, a seasoned expert, somebody that is a well-trained technician that is going to be on ground that will be training this, uh, you know, this mechanic. Depending on the area of their specialization, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be having regular training, you know, from time to time. Hang on, I thought you were hooking up existing. Mechanics yeah. Yes, of course. And they're, they're already existing. Like but I, now you're going to train them. No, of course, no, they need training. Because, because why? They, I'm going to protect they, this guy because this idea mustn't die. No, 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 no. This is a good idea, and that was why I was trying to help him. Listen, let me help you now. That's what I'm trying to help this guy. I, I to explain that. You, part. Okay, you know what? I understand you. He's got a lovely idea. Well, why don't we try but something? Not the other why don't we try something? Oh. Why don't you get up and go stand next to him? Okay. Pitch to us, you know, as his partner there, and we decide if you're convinced or not. This is unprecedented. The AYE president has never stepped in to help an applicant to pitch before. We've got an idea. What if I tell you that the headache of you getting stranded in the Lagos street and wondering who's going to fix my car, or the headache of somebody fixing or repairing your car, and after two days, that car is not working, or the headache of somebody changing the wrong things in your car, can go away by just one single hour. How does that sound? Fantastic. It's called the Mecha World. It's a world full of mechanics, well-trained mechanics, certified mechanics, seven-star rating, and these mechanics, I can guarantee you, will fix your car and will return only your money in your holding purse. We will not release your money to those mechanics, not that you have confirmed that your car is working perfectly in seven days. Will you use my app? I think you would. Now, what do, what do we want to do? We want to develop an app, which is the Meko that I spoke to you about, and we want a facilitating and training center for this mechanic. Of course, we're going to be going for the best end, Mr. Zunaid. The best end in Nigeria is Ibada Ahmed, but we still need to train them on customer service, customer relation, and of course, how to use the app. Ladies and gentlemen, with 35 million naira, we can both transform the mechanic world in Nigeria, in Africa, and of course the entire universe. So, I just had a light bulb moment. 
I just had a light bulb moment. I'm thinking, right? You should partner with existing colleges that train these people, okay? Because you have now become a job creator. And those mechanics can sign onto your app, okay? And you've automatically created jobs for them through the clientele. So you now you believe in the app. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Pardon me? What did you say? <laughs> what now you want the app. No, no, no. Because, listen, be open-minded. I need you to be open-minded. We are right? open-minded. Okay, together, the two of you. <laughs> Why not go partner with an existing college that actually trains these people, okay? Ensure that you transfer those skills as well so that they're well-trained, okay? Volunteer on that, right? Sign some sort of MOU with those schools because at the end of the day, what is the main purpose of going to get some level of education and training? Is to get a job. I think she's right. She's given us a great idea. Mm -hmm. She now wants her help, but she's trying to save us the cost of having the training center. So, okay. so what if we tell you that we can remove the cost of the training colleges? Then I will work with you. And I don't know if it's I don't know if it's unanimous. That makes sense. Do you guys agree that he doesn't need to go into the business of opening up a school I, and training? I totally am not into that. I think that that that's just a whole other area. I agree with you. It's hundred percent. Yeah. It, it's it's not going to be. It's, we're, we're not, I'm not looking at opening up a school. Like, but what were you going to open? Like, a shop? school. Called Our center. training. It's not training you on how to be a mechanic. No, no, no. What is they, it training they're already, on? They are they're already, already mechanics. mechanics. They're what are you I'm aware. Are they not already? He said they're, they're not. They're 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 all, say, he they're, said 90% of the mechanics in Nigeria are not, not good mechanics. They're not updated mechanics. They're, not, they're, they're going to update them. They're, they're not updated because most of them, when they learn, they do that with an existing school. Take that in. Partner yes, with we're them. taking your idea now. We're willing to drop off that cost. Can we reduce the amount? Yeah, sure. To like how much? That was more than 90% of your budget. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Take it out. No, 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 not to the school. They are the, the office. We need our president back now because you want money from us. <laughs> Let me go okay. back. I, I think I've tried 90% the school. So is that 10% is just the app? 10% no, can build that app. No, 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 the app, the, what the app, the app is going to be multifunctional actually. What it's going to do is that it's going to, it's going to collect data and then store it for reference purposes in the future. Do you have an app developer in mind? Um, actually, yeah, I've spoken with some. Um, I've spoken with some actually. Have and you costed it? Yes. Is that part of what the thirty-five million is about? Yes, ma'am. What also, percentage? What amount of it? It uh, is the app. Actually, is going to cost about uh, six thousand, five thousand, six thousand dollars. Just wait for us. I, I agree that there's something. For me, it's a mess because there's so much stuff, but we've kind of distilled it down to what can work through your presentation and what you've said. You got it, right? Yeah, eliminate the score. So, too much how, how do we support him to get that going? And you know, IT and that, that it's not $6,000. Yeah, of course. That's, that's why I was not, struggling with 10% to be yeah. there. So, how, how do we help him put together like a mind map? and maybe some wireframing a project plan on the app and when he starts seeing then he can go and get a quote on what it costs to do the entire universe compared to he needs this 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 build a following then he can start adding components into that not, not you can't do it all in one go it's impossible i really believe what you saw in the beginning it took me a while to get to but i really believe he's got something but he's got to be focused nansul looks anxious and shaken up even the judges aren't in agreement themselves. Where does he stand? We will give him an investor and a business plan. We can put together a proper business plan for him. Look at the one idea, that nice idea that I came up with. With you going to the colleges and say, if you can either certified, I'll put them on the app. You, you can always take here and there, and before you realize it, it's, it's yeah, going to But happen. he needs the app. I think what you said is great, right? What he can do is, first of all, work on a proper business plan and a pitch deck and then now pitch that to the investor yeah. to build the app. Okay, I've got a message for you. 
Nanso is so passionate about his idea and the way that he sees it. He can't see the big picture. He seems unable to understand that the judges are trying to help to break down a massive project into logical steps, timelines, budgets and projections. I've got bad news. Um, I tried. You can see I'm sweating, right? Came on top there, did everything I could. But you can't get that if I win that. And you're not even getting any money. What you're getting, if you want, is a proper business plan for this business. And a pitch deck that you can then present to an investor. Because there's an idea, but there's no business yet. I know how you feel because I feel the same way. I can see the idea and I can see the business. So it's left on to you. If you want to take what you want to offer, fine. And if not, thank, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm here to learn more, to add to what I know already. So whatever I'm offered, I'll work with that. The next applicant is an interesting entrepreneur. This is another kind of pitch altogether. I'm Alimir Amonsoni by name. I'm here to present a business it's called Cassava Processing into Fufu and Gary. It is in stages by stages. We start from the receiving of the cassava, from receiving the peeling, from peeling, the watering, cleaning, and soaking. That's the first stage. After the soaking, you have to leave it about three, four days before you come back to it. Then you bring it out, wash it. Then you start to uh, you start to to the next stage which is um, the featuring. In Nigeria, we produce over 50 million metric tons of cassava every year. Over 26 states out of the 36 states in Nigeria produce the crop. If we embrace good agricultural practices, the production, processing, and marketing of cassava can actually serve as a good tool to reduce the high rate of poverty and unemployment in Nigeria. Teaching is when you differentiate the real fufu from the one they use in um, lafu. Um, the, in other parts of uh, Nigeria, the southern part, the lafu they waste it away because they call it as a, a waste product. But in southwest, lafu is a common food as amala. We call it a uh, white amala. So that one, it's, we have to dry it and pass through the grinding before it becomes lafu. But the fufu one, after, the, after separating it from the lafu one. Okay, you are telling us how to make fufu. Yes, sir. And lafu. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about the fufu, but out of that fufu, there is, you make lafu. You make lafu with it. You don't just waste. <laughs> but I want to eat lafu now. <laughs> you said it's a dirty. So is that why you're here to tell us how to make lafu? How to make fufu? You came to tell us how to make. How to make fufu? <laughs> okay, so lafu. tell us how to make. And when you finish telling us how to make fufu, you go. Sir, after you finish telling us how to make fufu, you go home, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so after you dry it, then what happens? After drying it, okay. that is for lafu. Oh, for, okay. for fufu, the, the one you separated from lafu, that's what makes fufu. So you have to put it in 
into a sack. Okay, in a separate, in a sack, sack. In a separate sack. Oh, okay. So that sack, you need to find a stone. Okay. To put on it so that the water can drink. What if, what if I don't put a stone on it? There is still water inside oh, okay. because you need to use water to separate it to the dirty. Okay. So you have to put stone. But okay. presently, there is a machine that do those work. It is called pressing machine. The machine will press. But I can still use stone. Yes. Okay. So after I push, put stone, what happens? The water will drink. Drain. Yeah. Then from there, it is lafu. No, it is oh. what they use for fufu. So now we know how to make uh, So this is what it will come out after after you have drained it. Thank you. Thanks for coming. It's quite shocking that Mr. Ramoni came all the way here just to tell the judges how to make fufu and lafu. Or did he just forget to mention his request? Wow, it was fantastic. I really I appreciate the opportunity being given to me. Us in there was no well, fantastic. Next on Africa's Young Entrepreneurs. Safu! 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 Oh!